In today's video, you are going to learn how to scrape leads from Google Maps using Octopus, which is a no-code web scraping tool. I know there are a lot of similar videos about the very same topic. However, Google Maps evolves pretty quickly and some no-code tutorials created, let's say, six months ago may not work as well as they used to. It's time for a quick recap. The link to download Octopus is in the description. Please note that this tutorial will allow you to extract phone numbers from companies, but not emails. If you want to get emails, I suggest you to use scrap.io instead. It's a kind of software, fast and easy to use. I also let you the link in the description for that one. As an example, I'm looking for barber shops in London. The idea is to scroll down to the bottom of the page as many times as possible in order to load new data and then to click on each single element in order to get the detail page. And finally, we will extract data like the title, the number of pictures, the number of reviews, the ratings, the categories, the phone numbers, and so on. The first step is to copy our URL and to paste it on Octopus. And then I click on start. We've got a pop-up which prevents us to have access to the website, but that's okay. We need to turn on the browse mode in order to remove it. I click on reject all and I have access to the website. I turn off the browse mode and in order to make sure that the pop-up won't appear anymore, I will save the cookies. I go to the options, use cookie and use cookie from the current page and to apply what I've just done, I click on apply. On this tutorial, we are going to apply a lot of different formula, all of them will be written in the description, so you just need to copy and paste them. These formula are XPath. If you want to know more about what they mean, I will probably make a video about this topic. The first thing we're going to do is to create a loop item, meaning we will select each element within our page. So I add a step and I create a loop. I need to take a look within the loop mode and to click on variable list. Then I insert my first formula, which is this one. I paste it, I click on apply. And as you can notice, we've got three elements, but three elements, it's not enough because if we scroll down to the bottom of the page and if we redo the same process, we can notice that now we've got six elements instead of three. So we need to scroll down to the bottom of the page before selecting all of the elements. I'm going to add another loop just above the first one, but this time it will be a scroll page element. This is a scroll and I have to choose whether it's a default scroll area or a partial scroll area. Here is an example of a default scroll page and here is an example of a partial scroll page. As you can notice, a partial scroll area means that the scroll bar is inserted within a part of the website. We've got a partial scroll area then and as an XPath, I insert this one. I click on apply. This XPath localizes the exact area in which the scroll bar is included. There are a couple more options. I suggest you select for one screen and we are going to scroll as many times as possible. So let's say 10,000 times. It doesn't matter as long as you check this box and loop when there is no more content to load. At the waiting time, I will wait for about two seconds each time. I click on apply. All that remains to do is to drag my loop item inside my scroll item. 
Now I can click on each of these elements. I add a click item element. I select relative X path. Basically, the difference between the relative and the absolute X path is that when you click on relative, it means that it will click on each URL specific to each element. Whereas the absolute X path means it's a very same URL no matter of which element you choose. The formula for that one is just slash A. And on the options, you click on load with Ajax with a timeout of 10 seconds. I click on apply to see if what we have just done works. I click on loop item and click item. And as you can notice, we've got the detail page. All that remains to do is to extract our data. So here is how we will proceed. I'm going to show you one example, but the process is the very same thing for all of the data. Actually, you've got two options. If the formula don't work anymore, you can do what we call a point on click. If I want to extract the title, I can point on the title, I can click on the title, and I can click on extract text of this selected element. And I repeat the same process for all of the elements I want to extract. However, this particular method is not very accurate and this is why we're gonna use the XPath. The other way to do it is to click on add step, extract data. First of all, we're going to extract the URL. So I add a custom field, page level data and page URL. Something which is paramount is to uncheck extract data in the loop. I click on apply. And as you can see, now I've got my data. To extract the title, add custom field, capture data on the page. I want to get the title. And each time you are going to click on absolute XPath. I insert my XPath. And I click on confirm. And if the process works well, I should have my title. I see you back in a minute. Finally, in order to keep our IP address safe, we will add some timeout. I click on the extract data step and I will wait around 10 seconds each time. I click on apply. I'm also going to add a timeout on the loop item, but let's say around one second this time. And I'm going to add another second on the scroll element. Once we have done this, we can run our task. I click on run and I click on start ad mode. Actually, there is a change you need to make. And if you've got any problem regarding this, please ask it in the comments. It's better if you drag the loop item outside the scroll item. In other words, we will first scroll down to the bottom of the page and secondly, we will extract all the data at once. And as you can notice, if we click on Show Browser, we are at the end of the list. All that remains to do is to export our data to remove duplicates, if there are any, and we are about to get an Excel spreadsheet. Here is what it should look like. This is the end of the video. I hope you have enjoyed it. If you need any kind of web scraping services, you can ask for a quote by sending me an email. And if you need to scrape Google Maps at a bigger scale, you've got scrap.io. The link is still in the description. See you next time.